Hey all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another T&I toy review. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Star Trek 7 inch scale figures from McFarlane Toys. Now specifically, I'm going to be taking a look at the new Captain Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation and James T. Kirk from Star Trek The Original Series, the William Shatner James T. Kirk. Now both of these figures come on a pretty standardized card back. They look pretty much the same. The only difference is the coloring and you've got the image of the characters up at the top. You've got the same Star Trek logo for both characters, which is the logo essentially from the original series. So with Captain Picard, it does say the next generation, but doesn't use the font, the next generation Star Trek font for that. So that's a little disappointing. And then you've got the figures clearly displayed. And then down below, you've got the names of the characters, which are done with stickers. On the back of the card back you've got images of the two figures. This is essentially the first wave and then down below you've got images of the characters not the figures but I guess the next two figures that they're doing and looks like it's going to be Spock and it looks like Leonard Nimoy so I'm guessing it's the original series Spock not not the uh, Chris Pine universe Spock or the Spock that's going to be appearing in the second season of Star Trek Discovery. And then the other figure they're doing is a Star Trek Discovery figure. It's it's the lead female character who is actually the stepsister of Spock. She's a human, but she was raised by Sarek and everything. Uh, don't get me started on the Star Trek Discovery series. Anyway, and the other thing they're doing is a phaser. Uh, they're doing a role play phaser, it, which is also based on the Star Trek Discovery series. All right, let's get these open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside of the packaging along with their other contents. Okay, so first of all, each figure comes with a display base and it's the exact same for each figure. It's just this thin piece of circular black plastic and on the top you've got the Star Trek name and the Delta symbol on there and you've got one foot peg. And again, it's exactly the same for both figures. And the figures do have peg holes on both feet so you can put it, uh, plug the figure in on the left or the right side. And for the most part, it seems to keep the figure standing pretty good. You can see See, I'm shaking it pretty good here and he's still standing so you know if you want something it doesn't take up a lot of shelf space so I do think these work nicely for keeping your figure standing on the shelf okay now for other accessories starting with Kirk you get this phaser rifle now this isn't really something you saw used a lot in the original series however it was used in the original or I should say the second pilot episode that had Captain Kirk and which was called where no man has gone before you also saw Kirk holding the rifle and several promotional images for the show early on so again while it wasn't actually something featured a lot in the series you know this seems to be pretty accurate for when it was uh, shown in the series what we saw so you've got the metallic silver for the barrel you've got some metallic silver here on the handle and up here on this top piece and then you've got this metallic blue throughout most of the rest of the weapon these uh, middle pieces these tubes are done with a brown plastic and you can actually rotate those and you got the handle on the back here which is done with black and you got a little more metallic silver and black here on this little piece that sticks out and you've got some lights painted on the back and on the front here on the top as well and you also I like you know this is supposed to be like a scope or a scanner and I don't know how well it shows up on camera but they actually you know sculpted a little target there so overall this seems like a nicely detailed weapon and pretty accurate to what we saw for the original series now unfortunately because of the articulation on the figure and the way the rifle is there's not a good way to get him to hold it you can't really tuck the back of the rifle under his arm or anything so you kind of just stuck holding it in this one position and you know when you have him raise it up like that it looks kind of funny um, you can straighten out the arm a little bit but really they didn't design it very well to hold the rifle in any kind of good pose now for other weapons, for Kirk, we get the Type 2 Phaser. Now this is something that we saw used a lot in the original series. Now you've got the Type 1 Phaser that attaches to the top here, and that is one piece. You can't actually remove it, unfortunately, and it's done with black and metallic silver. And then you've got the metallic silver on the front and the back here, and then you've got this kind of gun gray for the rest of the Phaser. So overall, this seems to be pretty accurate. You also get a communicator. So this again is something that we saw used quite often in the original series. Now this uh, flat piece is actually done in an open position. You can't close it 
which is a little disappointing. It is done with a rubber material and you do have some uh, texturing uh, sculpted on there. You've got the little circle here on the on the face of the communicator. This is where they would talk into it. There's no uh, design there. Um, the actual communicator would have like a little uh, swirly thing. So it would have been cool if maybe they added that. As it is, they just used a metallic silver paint. Same with the buttons. No coloring on the buttons or anything. And the rest of the communicator is done with just a black plastic. And then finally you get an extra hand for Kirk. So he comes with hands. Uh, he's got a, a closed fist for the right and then a more, a little more open hand for the left. And then you get a, a second right hand, which is a little wider grip for holding things like the communicator. And switching out the hands is pretty easy. You just pop off the hand you want to replace. You've got the little peg that actually attaches to the arm and the hole on the hand itself and then you just plug in the hand you want to replace it with and you push it in pretty good. It does fit nice and tight. And you can see you can have him hold his communicator in one hand and his phaser in the other, or you can stick the rifle in the hand. So, you know, you can basically have him hold stuff in either hand. Okay, now for Picard, he just comes with a Type 2 phaser from Star Trek The Next Generation time period. Now this one, I believe, is supposed to be based on the one we start seeing used around uh, season four of the series. Though honestly, this really looks maybe more, just because the handle is more curved, looks more like ones they started using around the time of Voyager and stuff. But, but definitely it's not the earlier phasers that we see in the first couple seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation. So you get this metallic silver, you've got a little bit of black on the handle back here with some sculpting detail with some line work. And then you've got black on the front here and you've got some uh, black here. Not a whole lot of detail, no additional paints other than this metallic silver, but there really should be some uh, green light on here for showing the power indicator and stuff. So, you know, they could have added a little more detail. And these things always look like flashlights to me when I was a kid. That's what I always thought they were. Um, but definitely, you know, like I said, it doesn't look bad. It's just for a high-end figure like this, I would expect maybe a little more detail. And then we also get this flute. So if you're wondering why Picard has a flute, it's because he got it in the episode called Inner Light. And basically, he, you see him uh, play it a few times in, in a couple different episodes. But there is one episode where this flute is, you know, predominantly portrayed and everything. And so that's where they got this from. And it's done with uh, a metallic gold color throughout most of it. And then you've got some white and some silver for the buttons and everything. And you've got some silver up here on the mouthpiece. So overall this looks pretty good and then for Picard he also comes with an extra right hand kind of a pointing hand so he can say engage when he's standing on the bridge of the Enterprise uh, that's basically what this strikes me as you can also like stick the flute in there if you want um, it's uh, kind of a tight grip so tighter than the the regular hand that comes with it and both hands again have a uh, kind of grip so you can put stuff in them it is uh, neither hand is really slated well for the phaser though um, I don't know. Um, yeah, neither hand really. You're going to have to probably do some prying of the thumb on this one to get the phaser in because, again, it's a very tight grip. Yeah, I was able to get a little, do a little prying of the fingers and get it in there, slide it in there. So he does hold it tight, but again, it's a very tight grip. So probably once you stick it in there once or twice, it'll stretch the fingers out more. So it won't be too much of an issue. But again, when you're first putting that phaser in there, just I uh, would use a little bit of caution. Now one thing I should note on both figures, both Kirk and Picard, they did not include any way to store the weapons on, on their selves. So if they're not holding it, you just have to set the weapons aside. With Picard, it would have been cool maybe if they'd included a little pouch that you could add to its waist and tuck the phaser in like you see in the TV series. And then with Kirk, I mean, they basically just attach their weapons to their belts with Velcro. So I don't know, maybe they could have done some little pegs or something with holes in the back of the figure. But as it is, you know, like I said, you can't with the phaser or the communicator on Kirk and then with the phaser on Picard, there's no way to store the weapons when they're not using them on the figure. 
Okay, now for the figure itself, starting with the head sculpt. So I wouldn't say this is a bad head sculpt, but I would have expected a little bit better from McFarland Toys. While it does look like William Shatner, I mean, you can tell it's supposed to be a young William Shatner. I don't think it's dead on to the actor. And so again, I think I, I kind of expected a little bit better from McFarlane in that regard. Also, I don't like, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but it looks like he, they put blush on his cheeks or something. You've got a little bit darker skin tone under his cheeks than the rest of the face. So I don't like how that looks in the light. The eyes look decent and the hair is decent with the brown. You got a little bit of wash in there, so no complaints there. I do like this, how they used the shirt. They made the shirt with a hard plastic. So, you know, I basically am comparing these figures to the older Art Asylum figures, which Art Asylum is now owned by Diamond Select Toys. But, you know, back in the day, they did classic Star Trek figures, which I think were probably the best Star Trek figures that any company has done. And the one thing I did not like about those older uh, figures was they used a rubber material on the shirts, which at the time, you know, when you first got them looked fine, but that rubber material just doesn't uh, stand up well over the course of time and so I do like the fact they use this harder plastic. Now the downside of this harder plastic though is you do have these weird lines on the side of the figure. Um, I don't know exactly why. I mean it's due to the construction of the figure but that definitely stands out a bit on, on this uh, and you also have these lines up here at the shoulder as well which you know you really didn't see in the actual outfit. The other thing I don't like is how they did the Delta Shield. So they sculpted this on here but they did it with a uh, the, they raised up the plastic too much on it. You know, in the original series, the Delta Shield on these shirts was basically just kind of an iron-on type patch type deal. So I think they could have gotten away with just painting this on, but it is, they sculpted it and I think they raised up the plastic too much. So you got that black that stands out quite badly with the metallic gold. So I don't like that at all. I do like, you know, how they did it with the rank insignia on his sleeves. Uh, these lines uh, designate his rank and they're done, they're sculpted as well and done with a metallic gold, but you can see they're not raised up that much on the figure. So I like how they did that. And I think if they did something similar with the Delta shield, it would have looked a lot better or again I think they could have even gotten away with just painting the Delta Shield on there as opposed to sculpting it. And then for the rest of the figure, he's just wearing the black pants, and then he's got the glossy black boots, which look fine. You know, the pants kind of uh, stand out a little bit here where they tuck into the boot, which is like you see in the series. So overall, you know, no complaints there. But still, with the face sculpt and the Delta Shield and stuff, just, you know, when it comes to sculpting detail, I would have expected a little bit better from, from McFarlane okay, Toys. And then on the Captain Picard figure, so this one, I like the head sculpt. I like the sculpting detail. It looks like Patrick Stewart. However, some of the paint applications throw off the face with the eyes. And then like with Kirk, you've got this weird kind of darker color under his chin. And with Picard here, you also have that darker color over his eyes as well. I don't know what that is, but when you get it in the light, it throws off the look. And then I also just don't like the way they did the eyes, painted the eyes on this one. So again, when you get it in the light, I think it throws it off. I think the face sculpt actually looks like uh, Patrick Stewart but but with the paint applications it definitely throws it off a bit the hair looks good you've got the white with the gray mixed in and other than the darker colors that you have under on his cheeks and stuff you know the rest of the skin tone like on his forehead and everything looks pretty good and then he's wearing an outfit from the third season on of Next Generation. So you've got the black up here at the top. You've got the little red rim here on the collar. And then you've got the little pips designating his rank. And that all looks good. I think those are actually sculpted with the metallic gold. So that's pretty good. And then he's got the red here in the midsection. Now, I do have a complaint here with paint. So first of all, you've got some red up here on the shoulder and the black portion that's showing through. And so that looks a little bit off. But my biggest complaint with the paint is you've got some black coming through here on the red portion. I don't know if that's supposed to be a wash or if it's just black bleeding through on the red. But either way, it just comes off making his outfit look kind of dirty. So I don't really like that. As far as his communicator here, that is sculpted on there. And you can see, I think they did this right. You can see it's not that raised up off of the shirt, which is kind of funny because on the Kirk figure, you know, it's much more raised off when it really should just be kind of like a patch. And then this, you know, these communicators were actually separate pieces that you could take off the shirts. And this one, you know, it's not nearly as raised up on the shirt as with that, that Kirk figure. But I think they did it right. The communicator, I think they did pretty well with this one with the sculpting. You've got 
got the metallic silver and gold and then he's just wearing the black pants and then he's got the glossy black for the shoes the boots and the pants cover the boots with this outfit so that's pretty accurate to what we saw in the tv series Okay, now these figures stand, they are seven inch scale figures, but Picard is the taller of the two, and he stands at about seven and a quarter inches tall, maybe just a hair under, and then Kirk stands right about seven inches exactly. Now, Picard, you know, Patrick Stewart may be a little bit taller than William Shatner, I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like the Picard figure is maybe a little too tall. I don't think he's that much taller than William Shatner. I, I won't swear to it, but just from what I recall, you know, seeing them in Generations and stuff, it seems like the Picard figure is maybe a little too tall compared to the Kirk. Okay, and here's a comparison with the older Art Asylum figures. So this is Kirk from the Mirror Universe and Kirk with the green shirt that he also wore in the original series. I, I couldn't find my Art Asylum Kirk with the yellow shirt, but you know, this gives you a good comparison. And, you know, I, I, I don't know, looking at these face sculpts, I mean, these are much older figures. So, you know, maybe this new one is a little bit better, but not drastically. So, I don't know. And then, you know, again, I don't like the Delta Shield. But as I mentioned, you know, these uh, incorporated a rubber material. And you can see some of the paint has uh, got lightened over the years and, and stuff. And on the back here, these marks have kind of developed. So, uh, I, the rubber material was good for the time. But I just don't like it because I just don't think it stands up well over the years. So, I do like the fact they used the harder plastic on this new figure. And then here's a quick comparison with some other older artists asylum figures other members of the crew from the original series everybody except for dr mccoy which i wasn't able to find at the time of the shooting but you can see these art asylum figures are a little bit taller than the new figure so they're not in perfect scale but i suppose if you wanted to put your new kirk figure with your older ones it would work for the most part okay and then for picard i actually don't have any of the older art asylum diamond select toy tv series picard figures but here is a comparison with the movie version from art asylum uh, with the newer outfit i always preferred these movie outfits over the older TV series outfits. Okay, now for articulation, I wouldn't certainly call these super articulated, but for a McFarlane figure, it's actually not too bad. You can turn the head to the left and the right, and it's the same for both figures. And you don't really get a whole lot of back and forth movement, a little bit of rocking, but not too much, and really no pivot either. With the arms, you can get the arms out pretty good, and you can rotate there at the shoulder. You do not have a bicep swivel. You only get a single hinged elbow, so they can bend their elbows about that much, and then you do get rotation at the elbow. You get rotation rotation at the hands and you get some up and down movement with the hands. You don't get an ab crunch or anything but you do get a waist swivel. Now they're using those side hinge type joints for the legs so you can do the splits pretty good even though it looks kind of funny and then you can get the leg forward about that much and then you can do the leg back about that much. You do not get a thigh swivel with these. You get a single hinge knee so they can bend their knees that much and then you also get rotation at the knee and then with the feet you get rotation and you get a little bit of up and down movement but not a whole lot and then no ankle pivot with these and two peg holes on the bottom of it. Okay, so that's my review. So overall I would say these are not bad figures, but they don't quite live up to my expectations from a company like McFarland Toys when it comes to the paint detail and the sculpting detail, especially with the paint. I think there's a lot of things on this, these figures that get thrown off by the paint, like with the face sculpts, with that weird kind of blush that they seem to put on there under the, on the cheeks and such. And then like with the Picard figure with the black bleeding through, it makes this outfit look dirty and such so definitely I kind of just expect a little bit more from a company like McFarlane so again while I wouldn't say these are bad figures I don't think these are exceptional figures and really nothing new here that we haven't seen on Star Trek figures from other companies that have been done before so if you don't already have Kirk and Picard you might want to check these out or if you're just such a huge fan you've got to have every single Kirk and Picard figure but otherwise you know if you have the older Art Asylum ones and such then I don't know if there's really enough here warranting buying these characters again now these figures are available now. We'll have a full image gallery up at toynewseye.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel by hitting that button down below. You should also hit the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And of course, you can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to all those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.